Hello, I'm uh, Damien Allard, I'm an F100M marketing manager. This nice aircraft behind me is the F100M. It's a strategic and tactical airlifter. It has been designed to be a tactical airlifter, that is to say to operate onto short and unpaid airstrip and also as a strategic airlifter, that is to say an aircraft able to accommodate all kinds of military and humanitarian um, equipment and to fly those vehicles over long distances at high speed and high altitude and ultimately to deliver those equipment onto those unpaved airstrip. Not only it's a, a tactical and strategic airlifter, but it's also a tanker for air to air refueling, a built-in tanker, that is to say any F-400M can become a tanker in only two hours by fitting, um, by fitting pods and cameras. Uh, behind me, so you can see the engine. Each engine, this engine is the TP400. It's, it's been made by a consortium, a European consortium, um, including uh, Snecma from France, ITP from Spain, MTU from Germany, Rolls Royce from the UK. Uh, so they're building this, this amazing engine of uh, 11,000 horsepower. This is the world most powerful engine in production. Uh, why do we use turboprop on such an aircraft? Because this is a tactical aircraft. That is to say, if you use a turbofan, unfortunately with a turbofan you would suck into the, uh, the, the, the air intake, you would, you would suck dust and rocks. And that's why we use, we use, uh, we use such, a, such, such a turboprop, because the, the, on, on a turboprop, the propeller would act as a first line of defense. Um, the four engine, the four engine, uh, 44,000 horsepower, is the equivalent of the power of 50 to 60 Formula One. Those markings are actually the um, the markings for air to air refueling. This is where we have the provision to receive the two pods for air to air to re air to air refueling. This aircraft has built-in tanker capability and is able to uh, refuel two fighters. This is the uh, main landing gear of the aircraft. Interestingly, this aircraft uh, has 12 wheels, so it enables a better, a better flotability, that is to say a weight distribution, which is something very important unto unpaved airstrip. Interestingly, even if its uh, maximum takeoff weight is much higher than current tactical airlifters for, such as the C-130, this aircraft has a better um, aircraft classification number, the ACN. This is the uh, paratroop door. The uh, paratroop door includes a deflector. This deflector is used uh, so that the paratroop, when he wants to, to jump out of the aircraft, is protected against, uh, against the... Um, uh, so he has a, a more comfortable position. This, uh, this, this step can be lowered so that the, uh, the paratroop has also a more comfortable position. So as you can see, it's very easy to jump out of the F-100M thanks to those two future features. This is the strut on each side of the aircraft. The strut, the idea of the strut is that we lower, we lower them and those struts, when we, when, we, uh, when we load very heavy loads, it enables the aircraft not to tip. I forgot to mention one very important feature on our main landing gear, which is the kneeling. This aircraft is able to kneel. That is to say, to lower the, to lower the, uh, the main landing gear, so that, so that you decrease the angle between the cargo floor and the ramp, so that it's easier to load um, heavy and, most importantly, outsized loads, such as the, the Chinook helicopter, that's, because indeed this, this aircraft can accommodate the Chinook, which is this uh, helicopter that you can see in front of us, or to Apache, or all kinds of helicopter. So this is the, the ramp of this aircraft, the ramp and the cargo door. On the ramp, you have ramp toes, which are used to help the vehicle to get in 
the F100 amp. Our ramp is capable to um, inflate to receive two pallets and those they are able to accommodate up to six tons. In terms of dimension, so this is the heart of the F400M, this is the cargo hold. In terms of height from, from the ramp threshold up to the wing box, the height is four meters. And then beyond the wing box, 3.80. In terms of width, four meters, and length, 17.7 meters. Just to give you an idea in terms of comparison, with the, if we compare this aircraft with the C-130, with the stretch C-130, this aircraft has twice the volume, twice the payload, and it's able to accommodate all kinds of uh, heavy and outside uh, loads. For example, this VBCI, which is a French, French Army vehicle, weights uh, around 28 tons, can be accommodated in, in, in the F-100, whereas it's way too heavy for a C-130. Like on other strategic airlifters, such as the C-17, this aircraft is fitted with rows with sidewall paratroop seats. On the left side, 26 of them. On the right side, 28 of them. This feature, this very important feature, enables to have um, nine pallets and the associated troops, 54 of them. The other advantage is when you have a vehicle such as this VBCI, you can have the vehicle and the associated infantry. Now if we move, you'll see that there is uh, this cargo floor. It's very easy to change the cargo floor from a flat floor configuration to a roller configuration. As you can see, it's very easy. You just flip it. So as you can see, I'm not an experienced load master, but a very qualified and trained load master can change this configuration in only 15 minutes. The other important feature, uh, also all the like on the ramp, on the ramp it's 10,000 10, pounds tie-down rings, whereas in the cargo floor, all of them are 25,000 pounds tie-down rings. In the F100M, we can accommodate up to nine pallets. So very easily, as I showed you before, we flip the flat floor onto a roller, and then very easily we can manually put this up so th and this system is used to block the pallets. This system includes a series of, of uh, X locks which are electrically uh, operated. And then from a panel located on that side we can very easily lock and unlock those X locks. This aircraft can accommodate up to 116 paratroops, 54 on the side, and then we can fit a certain line with 62 additional seats. This aircraft has been certified according civil standards in terms of safety. Those panels are, fab are panels for the oxygen mask. This aircraft include for the uh, comfort of the passenger toilets, normal civil toilets in the in the in the very end of the uh, the cargo hold, but also urinals. Those urinals will be mainly used once once the paratroop is fully equipped. This aircraft is able to accommodate up to 66 stretchers for medical evacuation. The cargo hold includes many features. Uh, to accommodate those stretches, such as those black frame. Uh, we also have some plugs for um, therapeutical uh, mask for medical evacuation, and also a series of many outlets, many electrical outlets, to enable to plug uh, medical, medical evacuation equipment. So as you can see, we have two configurations, a full medevac configuration of 66 stretches and then a permanent one with eight. This aircraft includes 
many boxes on the side, as you can see, to store all the different equipments that you would use to lash vehicles or pallets or your lash, all, all the equipment for the cargo hold. This is a 32 ton capable cargo winch. This is something you would use to, to pull a helicopter so that it's much easier to load a helicopter or heavy armored vehicle, whatever you need, it, you need it for. This is the Loadmaster workstation of the aircraft. This is, this, is the, uh, this is the point where the Loadmaster would manage all its system related to cargo and airdrop operation and also communication and all safety um, related uh, items in the cargo holds. It's very easy through this uh, console to prepare uh, its loading plan, uh, to establish its uh, center of gravity, basically to plan all the loading operations. This is from where also that it would activate also all the uh, all the the locks for the airdrop. Uh, this. This screen can be used as a, um, a surveillance screen, as you can project video there, which is very useful for airdrop operations. On these screens, you can see a series of symbols that correspond to the different x locks so that we can activate them and disactivate them for airdrop operations. This is the uh, F-400M cockpit. This aircraft has been designed around the cockpit of the A380. You will recognize the typical Airbus philosophy. Eight screen, trackball, joystick, uh, is fly-by-wire. The main difference with the A380 is all the military functions that we added to this A380 cockpit such as airdrop, air to air refueling, self-protection here and also one very important thing, the head-up display. The idea behind the use of the head-up display in the military world is that when they fly at low level, they only concentrate on flying the aircraft and they don't look at the screen so that it's much easier at low altitude. This aircraft can be flown just by a pilot and co-pilot. This position it's only an option. This is something that can be used for uh, very demanding tactical missions, such as uh, the, the management of a data link uh, at low level or in the framework of a big coalition involving many aircraft. Those screens, you can switch uh, navigation, communication, even video information from one screen to another very easily. You can, you can use the trackball, to, um, to display all your system, all the, 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 the status of your different system on the aircraft. As you can see, this is a very comfortable and huge cockpit so that the, um, so that the crew can fly this aircraft over long distances and therefore a long time. It includes a crew rest area so that we can have a spare crew having a rest meanwhile the other ones are flying the aircraft. The other important thing in this cockpit, to increase the comfort of the crew, this aircraft is fitted with a small galley to heat some food and to prepare coffee and uh, to, make the, to make their mission slightly more comfortable. This interesting feature is a small computer to uh, give all the, um, the status of the different systems so that we can optimize the maintenance of this aircraft. Upon arrival, the aircraft, you can very easily take this computer and give it to the maintenance engineer so that they can have all the status of the system and they can perform the kind of check, all the, the, the typical check they have to do. So this is the end of our visit. I hope that you, uh, you like it. So this unique aircraft, the F-100M, the only aircraft combining tactical and strategic uh, capabilities 
is the future of airlift. As of today, we have 174 aircraft on order and we'll hope that India will be interested one day in this aircraft.